Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2018 career mode. It's been a little while but we are finally back here for round number 11 for the German Grand Prix and pretty much the halfway point of the season. If you guys did miss round 10 for the British Grand Prix a few days ago, then do check out the episode guys by clicking the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. But uh, we're here at Germany, it's been a couple of days, there's been a lot of F1 2019 news that's been broken and uh, Krimo's been put on ice for a little bit, but uh, we are back once again and as you can see the weather conditions this weekend, pretty straightforward, no rain expected. However, in the development race, we have no upgrades this race. Yet again, Sauber have brought some upgrades and the gap is massive <laughs> it's the biggest it's been in a long time and they're really pushing on however it kind of got me thinking after this I looked at the main menu and surely Sauber now must be reaching the limit of the upgrades because Sauber can't max out the bar the only thing they can max out the bar is Mercedes and I believe Ferrari so surely Sauber must be running out of upgrades now so it gives me a little bit of hope that if they're maxing out, we can definitely start to begin to catch up in the second half of the season. So that's something to keep an eye on here because Sabo actually in the game start off as one of the worst teams on the grid. So there can't be much more left in the tank for the team in terms of upgrades. So that could be a good thing going forward. Not for this particular race because I think they're going to be extra fast. But maybe if you know towards the end of the season when it gets to crunch time when it really matters. As things stand, we do have around a 20 point lead on, on the championship in, on Charles Leclerc. So... The longer we keep that lead, the better as we try to catch up to Sauber in the upgrade race, pretty much. So, you know, even if it's like Leclerc wins the next few races and I come second, that's still going to be a 21-point spin. So it could take speed races for Leclerc to retake the lead in the championship as long as I keep on getting those second places. So um, we've got three races in my head, more or less, to try and turn this around and bring some big upgrades of our own going into the second half of the season. But nonetheless, let's move into qualifying here and let's see how things go on the Saturday. Beautiful, sunny conditions. I'm going to go for three runs in this session and I must admit it wasn't the smoothest qualifying you'll ever see uh, we had a lot of trouble with lap traffic and blue flags in this one and um, something that I hope does get fixed for next year's game it kind of really this one really bothered me a little bit it really got to me and you'll see in a moment's time but nonetheless three runs my best run was the second one so uh, we're going to run and board for that one in full but first of all let's check out the highlights of my first run here as we hit the track behind Sebastian Vettel now midway through my first lap here we've got Brennan Hartley in front of us in the Toro Rosso here and uh, he's currently, I believe, on an outlap because he only just left the pit lane and he's going to start his lap next time around. As you can see, on the straight, he kind of realises I'm coming and he kind of moves and then he realises, OK, I'm going to take the racing line and then I get put off here. As you can see, he still doesn't slow down and move out of the way and he turns into the corner. I try to go down the inside, spin the car and, uh, yeah, a very, very annoying one there. Hartley had plenty of time to move out of the way and he didn't do nothing about it. So our first run is in the bin and uh, we can forget about that one very, very quickly indeed as... Uh, we're going to have to go for another run here. And this one was my best one of the session. So let's ride on board here for a lap of the Hockenheim circuit. Straight away through turn one. Down a gear. Really attack the apex. I have a little mini screen freeze there. Which makes me cut the corner a bit. And turn in a little bit earlier than I would have liked. Luckily we still managed to hold on. As we now break up the 100 meter board. Third gear. Making sure you pick up the apex there. Then on the power. Nice and early. Flat out through turn three. Onto the back straight. DRS wide open here. We've been fastest through sector one all weekend long. And we lose most of our time through sector two. So here we go. Racing towards the hairpin now breaking just before the 100 meter board here down to second gear and then later on down to first to pick up the rotation make sure you focus on a late apex and good traction on the exit flat out now as we try and maximize the speed going through the flat out right into the mercedes-benz grandstand section here through this 90 degree left and it's all about letting the car flow through here don't overdo it as we now go try or try and go flat through the next rut which we just about managed to do running a little bit wide there but just about keeping it within track limits only a tenth down through second two as we now go through the stadium section here throwing the car in now into the sax curve into the hairpin a little bit wide they're missing the apex slightly but we get a good exit and straighten up the car nicely as we now go into the two final corners here trying to attack these apexes let the car run wide and then bring it back in for another late apex then on the power drs open overtake drs across the line and we go p3 a tenth off the pole position time of Charles Leclerc as things stand. But the Sabres are pretty quick here. As you can see later on, on my final run, um, I mean, you know, what 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 can I say? What a place. What a phenomenal place to get out of the way there from the Renault. I mean, that was really, that really annoyed me. It did cost us, you know, three tenths. We had to compromise the line through the hairpin. Vettel's currently gone P3. And we're now down to P4. And then through the rest of the lap, Magnussen also did not get out of the way as he wanted to start his lap. And... Um, yeah, we didn't improve. We got a lot of dirty air through that final sector. And I was ultimately very, very annoyed there. And uh, yeah, it just ruined my entire session. You know, I only got one clean run. And the other two were down to just traffic not getting out of the way. And the blue flag system not working in this game. But nonetheless, 
looking at the final race results, Charles Leclerc bags the pole position. And to be honest with you, I reckon second place was possible. Uh, my actual lap in itself and my second run was not the best. It was a pretty scruffy lap, to be honest. And there was an easy number of four tenths, five tenths in that lap, without a doubt. Pole would have been impossible, but P2 was definitely definitely possible. And we could have got that. Ultimately, we're going to start from P4 alongside Sebastian Vettel. And we're going to try and go again tomorrow and try and convert this position into a podium, if not a second place. With that being said, let's jump into it for the German Grand Prix. Good afternoon and welcome to a place that is very special to us all in the Formula One community. It's the Hockenheim Ring, home of the German Grand Prix. Always good for a close scrap is Hockenheim. Think back to Alonso, Ricardo, Vettel as recently as 2014 and I'm expecting some more strong racing today. It's 2.8 miles around the Hockenheim Ring then with an average lap speed in excess of 130 miles per hour. The long curved back straight leads into a tight hairpin for the best overtaking opportunity on the circuit. But there are plenty of other options available around the 17 corners here today. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about Martinez. That was a great podium in the last race, so can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. So before the off, Let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Marcus Ericsson completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Vettel, Martinez, Fernando Alonso and Hülkenberg, Sainz, Perez, Van Dorn and Max Verstappen, Ocon, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean and Gasly, Hamilton, Bottas, Brendan Hartley and Daniel Ricciardo. They've taken a grid penalty. Stroll and Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Okay, then here we are for the German Grand Prix on the grid alongside the home hero, Sebastian Vettel. Charles Leclerc, as usual, on pole position. Marcus Ericsson, P2. In terms of the strategy today, it's going to be an interesting one. We have a two-stop recommended with double soft stints and an ultra to start off with. And uh, fuel-wise, we are going to be 1.2 laps over. Not too heavy, because the car's very, very efficient on fuel now. Now, um, there's a possibility, an outside possibility, we can go ultras onto mediums. But that depends on how well the ultra soft performs, to be honest. Um, I'm expecting Leclerc to go ultra-medium. That's my guess. So, I might go aggressive with a two-stop. But it depends how things go with strategy and if we have enough space to really make the tyres work and, you know, push hard. So, we'll see how it goes. The target is simple. I want that second place. I think it is possible. And uh, that's the best way to do damage limitation here Today. So we need to get past Sebastian Vettel and Marcus Eriksson. The target is simple. Let's just jump into it. Overcast conditions, no rain expected. Without further ado, it's time for the German Grand Prix. Let's go. Right, here we go. Let's get ready for the five red lights here at the Hockenheim. Round 11 of the season. And it's lights out and away we go. Good start off the line, actually. Everyone gets off, though, relatively similarly. As we go into turn one here, Vettel and Eriksson compromise. We're going to slip through. Racing down towards turn number two here. Ericsson defending the line. Vettel around the outside. We're going to have to be careful here. Power down. Oh, Vettel giving me the squeeze onto the curb there. As I pick up a track extension. Side by side with the Ferrari. We're maxing our engine power here. Now Vettel's going to pick up a tow from Ericsson here as we race down towards the hairpin. Late on the brakes. Very hot on the brakes. But we're going to just about get it slowed down. And we make the move then. We get past Sebastian and Vettel. Good stuff. Very, very, very good start there. We get past Vettel straight away. So uh, we're in P3. We're now behind Ericsson. One more card to get past. Leclerc's already starting to build a lead here. My only chance is that Leclerc goes aggressive on strategy and goes for a two or a three stop. If that happens, I might reconsider my options. But for now, I'm fully expecting him to go for the one stop of this in this race. All we can do is try to beat Ericsson as uh, we have almost a flashback there to qualify where we spun it at the hairpin. Let's see if we have pace. I think I've got pace. I really do. I think we can attack Ericsson here today. And uh, we've got one track extension to our name. Obviously, thanks to Vettel shoving us out wide. So um, let's see if we can not pick up any more. Great run through turn one already there. That's one of my strongest corners on the track. And we've got a run on Ericsson here. No DRS just yet, but you know maybe we can get it with just pure slipstream on the power. Flat out now. A little bit far back. Do we have enough? 
I don't think we do. Not with that DRS. I think there's going to be a little too much of a gap to make up against the Sauber. Yeah, it is a little bit too much for now. We're going to just sit behind. And be patient. And try and maybe pick off Ericsson on the next lap with DRS assistance. Must admit the pace is actually great so far. I'm very impressed. Last season in the McLaren, I, I couldn't lay a glove on the Saubers. But today, we've got good pace. And uh, I'm faster than Ericsson. So I want to make this move through turn one. Carrying the speed here. Ericsson will go defensive. DRS is now enabled. I'm going to try and open up the line here. Go for the switch back. Onto the back straight. There we go. Ericsson, as usual, gets the great acceleration of the Sauber. But this time, we've got DRS assistance. We're also a lot closer. And here we go. We're going to go for the move here on the Sauber. We're going to pull to the right-hand side. And we're going to blast past. Get it all slowed down for the hairpin. There we go. Second place acquired. Very good start to this race. Great pace. Car's working well. Now, of course, the question is, can we shake off the Sauber? It's going to be tricky, but I'm going to give it a go. The, the final sector is my strongest sector. So uh, let's give it a go and let's see if we can make it happen. Personal best here. Just uh, trying to extend the gap to Ericsson, trying to push him out of the RS range. Tires are starting to go though already. I can feel it. The rears are struggling to keep up. But I think I've done enough here to open up over a second to Ericsson. Yes, we have, but I think he might still have the RS. So we need to keep pushing here. One more lap at least. Sebastian is in the pits. Okay, so Seb pits in. That's a very early stop, actually. So we'll see how that one pans out. I'm guessing we're scheduled to pit in this lap. Either way, I want to see what Ericsson does. I'm going to presume he's going long. I mean, that's my guess. We're keeping it at two and a half seconds, but I've not got any more pace in this. I'm kind of on the limit, to be honest. Right, I've had enough. I'm going to pit in. I can't take these tyres anymore. The rears are going as we drift through the final corner here. Leclerc does pit in, to be fair, so... That's okay for me, that works for me. There we go into the pit lane, pretty safe entry, but getting this slowed down. And Leclerc hasn't pulled away that much, which is good. There we go, 2.3, decent stop as well. Leclerc, there for quite a while, he was held off a little bit. He's going to come out a little bit of traffic as well, which is good. Difference is, he's going to come out beyond those two cars. I'm going to have to get past two more, it seems, as you can see. So, well, that's the difference, but still... Leclerc not making, you know, massive progress. Tires are cold here. I'd love to get past these guys straight away. But I don't think it's going to happen. I bet Leclerc, he would easily get past the two of them, but I haven't got that kind of horsepower, so we're going to have to just sit back for now. Our kind of grows are not going to start by our side, so we could cash in on this potentially. Oh, great run through there. Down the inside of Ocon. Bit of an unexpected one, but we're going to take it. Leclerc hasn't got past those two cars yet. He's going to obviously start making progress now that we hit the straights. But it's good to see that he hasn't run away with it. And now we're going to try and get a run on Grosjean here. Turn up the engine. Ericsson leaving the pit lane. There we go. Nice and easy return one. We're going to get the run on Grosjean. We're going to go to the inside. It's a bit close. Grosjean with a last minute pinch, but we are going to... Get the move done, or are we? Grosjean hanging in there, but we're just going to go on the outside and take it. However, we're not going to have DRS here, so Grosjean's going to come back at me. I'm going to go to the defensive line. I'm going to try and squirt it on. Here comes Ericsson. I'm going to box him in. He's trying to go for a gap there that I'm not really sure what he's trying to see. Into the hairpin, though. We're going to take the inside this time, and I'm going to try and solidify the position. And there we go. This time, we get the job done. Let's try and pull away if we can from Ericsson, who has already got past Grosjean, it seems. I wonder if Ericsson maybe lost an end plate there by making that attempt of a move on the back straight because he's not keeping up here through the final sector. He's dropping off rapidly. So my prediction is we'll get a replay on it, but I think Ericsson's lost an end plate. I think he hit the back of Grosjean and lost an end plate because there was nothing on my side. I couldn't see anything on the floor. So it's definitely seeming like he's hit Grosjean and lost an end plate. So Ericsson is going to no longer be a threat in this race. So you can now breathe a little bit. A little bit of breathing room with P4. The last two remaining soft runners are in front of us, and then they're close towards the end of the straight. So we're not miles away. We are still in this race. I think Leclerc is going to have a little bit too much pace for me, but I want to try and keep him honest. And uh, if anything does go wrong, I'm going to be there to cash in on it straight away and pick up the pieces. Okay, then here we go. We're now really starting to put the pressure on these two guys on the soft compound tyres. DRS open. Let's try and get uh, Verstappen first of all as we go into turn one, carrying the speed, getting the run and the exit. There we go. We're going to box him in now. Behind Magnussen, down the inside of the Haas at turn two. 
Magnuson does hold on. I'm going to sit back. I want to get the DRS, make it a nice easy move. And there we go. We're now going to open up the rear flap. And we're going to power past the Haas. Overtake the DRS engaged. And there we go. Job done. Very simple move. That Haas is actually pretty good for straight line speed, but not enough. And we get the job done. We're back at the second place now. Leclerc just up the road. And so far, the race has been a great success. Uh, we've got more pace than I expected. I really thought it would be a 1-2 for the Sabres and we couldn't compete due to the updates. And based off of last year, where with the McLaren, I didn't stand a chance. You know, we just didn't have the pace. We got third on the day. This year, with the Ferrari, is much better. And we're actually more competitive than I expected. So things are going well so far. 4.5, the gap has increased. The gap was 2.5 in the final stint. So we've lost a little bit of ground to Leclerc, but it's not all doom and gloom. Now we get to get a head down and see if we have any pace relative to the Sauber driver. Personal best. We're faster than Leclerc at the minute. Four tenths of the lap. Oh, pretty much four tenths, sorry. Yeah, four tenths, three tenths, game that last lap more or less. Not sure the exact number, but we are faster than Leclerc at the minute. I'm running maximum engine power, trying to make some progress and make some inroads. And so far it's working. We're gaining on the Sauber. The gap stayed at 3.9 now for the last three laps. Pace has kind of stabilized a little bit, but still, he's not getting away from me, which is what I want. If anything goes wrong, a lap car or something, we're going to be there. I've made a few adjustments to the way I use my ERS and fuel, and it seems to be working. We're gaining a little bit of ground now on Leclerc. It's not much, but it seems to be working. I'm also saving as well, which is good, so let's see if this works. Gap now 4.7. Leclerc is uh, starting to pick up the pace again. It's that kind of phase where the tyres start to just start to fade out a little bit, and I'm starting to struggle with my rubber. He seems to find some pace, and... Uh, Go faster, so Leclerc's starting to get the gap out once again here, and I can't really respond to be honest. I'm pretty thin on the old rubber. Sebastian's in for his stop. Sebastian pits in, so the, we should be in this lap as well. A lot of traffic coming up as well, so Leclerc's just about going to get away with it, I think. Here we go then. Into the pit lane. The end of that stint, these tyres are done. Leclerc pits in, final stop of the race. Let's make sure we maximise the pit entry here. I don't speed, there we go, pretty decent stuff. Look like actually quite a bit of a gap towards the end there, 5.8. There we go, nice quick start once again, 2.3, but Leclerc has got a little bit more of a gap this time and no traffic unfortunately, but look at that, I'm going to feed out behind Ericsson. I mean, it just doesn't work out for me traffic-wise, it doesn't. You know, Leclerc had those two extra cars to get, sorry, I had those two extra cars to get past in the first in. Leclerc had two less, and now I've got to get past Marcus Ericsson, who I'm hoping will just pit in this lap to be honest and get out of the way. Who I believe still has front wing damage, but out of the way, fresh softs now. Look, it's looking very likely that second place is going to be where we're going to finish this race. I'm going to burn off the extra fuel and uh, try and bring this one home. But it's, been, it's still been a good performance nonetheless. I'm happy with second. I said I wanted that at the start of the race. And I'm happy how close I've kept Leclerc considering the pace difference between the two cars at the minute. So a good day's work. But let's try and finish this on a high and uh, try and get that second place secured. There we go. Ericsson pits in. That's going to release me now into some clean air back at the second place. Let's push for a little bit and let's have a little bit of fun. Let's see if we can try and close down the gap to Leclerc, 7.5 to be exact. He's really had a strong outlap, so let's try and get that gap down, maybe back inside five seconds. 10.9 from Leclerc, strong pace. Can I match that? I'm not so sure. I'm going to try it. 11.0, so we're just a tenth off. And that kind of sums it up for me. That's the kind of difference in pace that I've lacked. Just that one, two tenths to really make the difference. Yellow flag in front. Is it Leclerc or is it the car in front, the lap car? Gone back to green now, so it seems to be okay. Bit of a scare there momentarily, but it seems like nothing's happened. Leclerc got down to five seconds, so he's lost a little bit of time. He might have locked up a run deep. Another 11-0. Consistent pace. Got to Leclerc, 4.9. He's struggling to get past that McLaren. Another 10.9 from Leclerc there. Resetting the pace out front. We set an 11-1. I'm being consistent, but this is the best I can do. He's now got past the, the McLaren, so he's back into clean air. So the little scare seems to be all for nothing as he's now back into first place. So we're just going to try and solidify the second place, to be honest, and try and bring it home. All VSC deployed. Something's happened. And Lewis Hamilton's out of the race in the Mercedes. The Mercedes home race. It's going to give me a chance to save some ERS and fuel and uh, go for another push. Although that's going to mean the same thing for Leclerc as well, so it doesn't mean much at the end of the day. That was not the best ending to the VSC, but we'll take it nonetheless. A lot of you might say now in the comments, why didn't I pit in? I could have done, but it wouldn't have changed the race result, to be honest. 
I still would have finished in second place, so no point risking getting a penalty for speeding into the pit lane or you know something like that. Let's just play it safe. McClure now just really setting the pace on one ten point six. I managed to do a 10.9 finally, but I'm about to give up to be honest and not keep pushing because I'm taking a bit of a risk. And um, I just don't think it's going to happen. The close, a little bit faster in this thing than the last one, so I can't match that pace as I lose the back end here. I'm pushing the limit a little bit too much here. So uh, I think we're going to call it a day on the pursuit of Charles Leclerc. Still, though, I'm very happy. A lot closer than he was last year. He is in traffic to be fair, so. I've only just seen that now on the minimap, and I'm not going to entirely give up, but I've got some traffic on my own here to, to deal with, with Sorokin and Alonso. Lots of battling here, Alonso is making progress, trying to unlap himself as he get past the Portas there, they both lose time and I fly past the pair of them. But the traffic is not actually um, being too kind to me at the minute, I'm struggling with a lot of them. Whereas uh, Leclerc is hitting them all in the back straight at the minute, which is kind of annoying. Leclerc setting more benchmarks here. I've just let Rojan pass me because he came in for fresh ultras two laps ago and is unlapping himself, so I'm letting him get on with it. But uh, we're just securing the position now. Last half of the Grand Prix, let's bring this one home and uh, secure the second place. There we go then, Leclerc ends it in style with a 110.1 on the final half of the Grand Prix. Ridiculous pace there, but we're going to come through. And it's been a good race here today, no complaints. Grazie ragazzi, Forza Ferrari, grande lavoro, la macchina è stato forte, più forte. Thank you, boys, and uh, we go again in the next race at Hungary. A great win then for the Sauber team today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them there, the better your race tends to go. And that's exactly what happened. Their car just looks so comfortable out there. Looks like they're on their way out to the podium now. And what a result this is. And what a popular one with the crowd as well. Great stuff to see the Sauber team on top here today. Right, so as you can see, looking at the final race results, Charles Leclerc wins the German Grand Prix ahead of myself. Marcus Ericsson running off the podium. Sebastian Vettel, P4 in the other Ferrari. Three seconds behind Ericsson, ultimately couldn't get past him. Then Kevin Magnussen, P5 in the house. Good result for him ahead of Nico Hülkenberg, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez and Esteban Ocon running off the points there for Racing Point Force India. And then missing out on points and finishing outside the top 10, we have Van Dorn, Ricardo, Grosjean, Hartley, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, Sergei Sorokin, Valtteri, Bottas at the rear, and Hamilton retiring from the Grand Prix. The Mercedes, even worse than the Williams in this race. Pretty disappointing for them in their home Grand Prix. In terms of the standings, though, Leclerc cuts down the lead. He's now 12 points behind us, and Ericsson remains in third place. Vettel jumps up to seventh, overtaking Roman Grosjean, and, Ma and Magnussen back up into P4. So he's still holding on there in the Haas car. But in terms of the constructors, we are now 66 points behind Sauber. The constructors looking pretty unlikely at this stage. They're so, so strong, and they score such consistent podiums. But nonetheless, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Career Mode. I'm trying to save away a few points and try and bring a massive upgrade package. So for now we're not going to bring any upgrades to Hungary but hopefully we'll bring some big upgrades for B Belgium onwards so if you guys did enjoy this episode of Cream Mode please do drop a like and also get subscribed for daily Formula 1 content and turn on notifications to not miss a single video from me and finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that thank you for watching let's see my next episode very soon but until then it's goodbye from me